Now the next step on our bodywork repair, we're going to try to fix all the flaws that remain in the part with basically with body filler material. We have another one of these beautiful hot days out there so it should dry up relatively quick. Now just to show what our objective is, this is a little chunk of gel coat that's missing. Another little one here. We have a piece of paint that's peeling up here. Usually I can just put some thin CA in there and just get rid of that. Otherwise what would happen as soon as I put paint on this, this is going to peel up like saran wrap. We got some little flaws here. Now keep in mind, here's what I'm trying to do with this part. I'm trying to make it as nice as possible within the bounds of like if you really want this to be perfect, the best thing is just start. It's probably cheaper too to start with a brand new part. All of this stuff as we build up more and more layers of paint, it's going to be a problem. But the good news is this is a track bike. So we're trying to get a good value for the amount of time and the amount of money that's spent on this. And I think we're going to be able to do it. So the first step on this. Now a couple of things that I've learned over the, the course of time. I know you don't have to, but I always prefer to let primer dry overnight. And it just sands easier and I'm always a, I'm always happier that it's outgassed totally that way. So what this, this is about 150, but it doesn't really matter. I want to identify any spot that I can see or feel that's really a problem. Now, because number one, a lot of these will sand out. Now, and we're going to reprimer this, of course. A lot of these will sand smooth. Let me just show this. And that one mm, pretty much is sanded out. Now, sometimes they're so deep that they're not going to sand out. I think this one is not going to sand out. And this is where just having a lot of patience. And again, if, if this were a street bike or a collector bike, it would warrant putting a thousand dollars worth of bodywork into it because you couldn't buy the parts. But since this is a modern bike and you can replace these parts, and especially because Vlad is a dealer for these parts, he probably gets them for nothing. <laughs> maybe, maybe, <laughs> we don't know. Maybe he's in a mafia, who knows. But anyway, what's, now that one didn't come out, so that one's going to need some attention. But I always find it with my bare hands or with gloves or whatever, this is always the method of choice of finding little spots. Now, just to show this up close, let me show it up close. See, the problem with doing this kind of body work is th there's, there's fiberglass, and this is the cloth of the original part. We've sanded through the gel coat because we have, there's been such damage here. And it was damaged here. Of course, this is this is the worst spot down here. But once you sand through, you have no choice here. Now, what one of the things that'll help this is if I and I'm going to show this is a really good trick. I know we're down into the the little chunks of uh, cloth and weave. So what I want to do is I want to seal that with thin CA, and I'll show how I do that. Now, whenever I know I've gone through and down into the cloth weave, the cloth is going to have all little air bubbles in it. Well, what's going to happen with the CA, and let me just show it, by dripping on a little CA, that's going to go down into that area. Don't hold the paper towel in one spot or what's going to happen, it'll just, and it's glued. Now what that does, it seals it, and all sort of capillary action goes down into the fiberglass cloth. Now. We should be able to, and again, the nice thing about working with CA, there's no, there's basically for all purposes, no dry time. We can get rid of that little bad spot. And I'm always feeling with my hand, yeah, that's gonna be fine. That's, that's gonna be as good as it gets. Now, as I tried to show this before, this is looking like paint that's getting ready to peel up. Now when you have multiple paint jobs, one on top of the other and one's on top of a crash or if you really you really have a soup here. So anything that looks like it's peeling up, I want to get on it with a piece of dry sandpaper, roughen it up as much as possible. Again, we're going to reprimer this part. And the idea here today is while one part is drying, 
While the primer on this, the second coat is drying, I can detail out or work on the fairing. So I'll get a good, uh, good production for my time that's available because time is so limited this time of year. And I've been really trying to squeeze this repair in for Vlad's benefit because he is a track day star. He is the king of Pocono or the king of uh, Vladivostok or <laughs> king of Rutherford. Who knows? Okay, now that's the, gotten rid of that, but now I want to do the same thing. What I want to do is put a drop or two of CA on that. And what that does, hopefully that'll seal it. Now I can move on and I'm going to do this basically to the whole part. Now this repair area where we have it down underneath, I've had, really had to do a lot of work here to get this the way I wanted it. But again, that, the whole thing here is to seal it. Once it's sealed, it's the, tr the magic is that it's a capillary action. And oh, I don't want to have this if this paint starts peeling up like saran wrap any more than I have to. Now, usually when you're painting gel coat, good luck. Every once in a while, you, you no matter what you do, they get this residue of mold release on it and every other thing. It's That's just part of the game. That, that's going to be fine, of course. Then a final thing on this part, before I reprime it, is just going to hand sand the whole thing with some smooth sandpaper. Now, what's good is I changed the towel. You can see all the dust stays in the towel. When I'm done with this, I can just shake the towel outside, and at the end of the job, I can throw all the towels, all the shop towels in the laundry, make one dirty laundry out of them. Once this whole part is sanded out, another coat of prime, and we'll see what we have. I think, I think it's really, this, this part really is coming out nice. And again, we're working within some restrictions that if we were working on a street bike, price would be less of an object. We'd be willing to spend a week if we had time, but we don't have the time, so. Anyway, we're going to war with the army we have. Let me just finish sanding this and we can get outside and while it's sunny out, they're predicting some thunder showers later, so I wanted to get this done. Anyway, and once that's reprimed, we'll see what we have. Okay, we're ready for some primer. I've been monitoring the weather and it, it's getting cloudy out there, so I'm kind of putting a little rush on this. I'd like to get this primer drying overnight tonight. And you see some clouds are rolling in and they said there's like a 70% chance of thunder showers. And the idea here is to get some light coats on this. I don't want to put it on too thick. Actually, in the time I'm doing this, the sun came back out, the sun's back in. Oh my god, what a mess. I will try to get this, at least get this one. And while this is drying, then I can do the uh, some of the prep on the fairing. I hear nobody's in the pool, so. <laughs> you have a pool over here, and I have a pool over there. And each family has multiple children, so. Nice light coats. The lighter the better. We're just using this as a binder. I'm not using it as a filler, just as a binder. perfect spot for it to dry. All right, while that's doing, our, our fairings are drying overnight. We should be able to do basically most of the steps we did on this, but on the fairing. All right, while the seed is drying, we know we have this porous area here where we've ground down into the fiberglass fibers. But we're gonna hit that with some thin CA, then some thick CA, and then hand sand it. And then there's several other little spots as I'm looking around here that uh, need to be addressed, but that's the biggest one right there. So now the answer is going to be, this will take a couple of cycles if I've filled it. I want to sand it flat, fill anything else. The idea is to use no Bondo or as little Bondo as possible.
Now each time you do it, the little moon craters will get lower and lower. Eh, we're sneaking up on it already. A couple more. And it just takes it just takes patience at this point. Because anytime those fibers are exposed, there's always going to be little pinholes and pock marks and things that you want to sand out. And that's the beauty of the CA. The CA just does it just great. Keep in mind, this was a piece that I could put my finger through and out the other side a couple of days ago. So, oh yeah. So we're going to go around. Obviously, we didn't think about the camera run all afternoon, but go around and take care of as many of these as we can and bring it outside for more primer. Okay, after all that sanding, the next step is going to be, let's, if it's not thundering out there yet, or not getting cloudy, we'll get another coat of primer on this. Okay, maybe we'll see if it's our lucky day. This is going to require a little more filler. Okay, I may have to use a little baby amount of that filler. Not sure yet. But every time you do this, it gets uh, the cosmetic part of it gets nicer and nicer, and you can see what areas need sanding. And overall, being able to salvage a part like this within a uh, maybe a one-week time window, significant thing you can add to the things that we do here. Yeah, it's a little more work there. This edge here is really beaten up. It's really, it really took a beat. I may have to put a little, bo a little body filler on that. But for right now. That can dry. And by the way, this is the primer we're using. Because the, the, the main feature of this primer is it seals. And in the word primer sealer, whenever you're going over old paint, you don't want it to peel up. You stack the deck in your favor using sealer. So the next part of this job is I'm going to wet sand this out with some 400 sandpaper. That should put the final uh, base on it. Now the fairing is drying, so I just thought of whatever time I have left today, I don't know if the tape is peeling up, but I'll check the masking. This will just make the finish just a little bit nicer, and anything we can do to revive this. Now when I do the fairing, I'll just have to be careful around the tape. There's a lot of tape on there and a lot of back masking to see. I can just basically sand the whole thing down and that'll be ready for paint. Now that's all the primer that's on there and that's all we're going to be able to get done today. Again, every day is uh, an adventure here. It's never, it's never easy being me. And after one more prime and sand out, that'll be ready. Boy, this was a big job. Amazing. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll pick this up tomorrow. And thanks for watching.